Jurassic World Evolution 2 has arrived, and it brings with it some high expectations from the community based upon its predecessor in the Evolution franchise. Courtesy of Frontier Developments, I had the opportunity to get hands on with this game for about a week ahead of its release, and in this video we'll dive into my thoughts. It's worth noting all the footage and gameplay you're seeing was recorded on an original Xbox One, so do keep in mind that some features may be more restricted in my version of the game. Let's get straight into it. We'll start with my thoughts on the campaign, since this is one of the most anticipated parts of the sequel, or at least it was for me. I enjoyed what the campaign offered for the most part, with a story which picks up tonally from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom nicely, exploring different locations across the United States and Northern America which have been affected by the addition of dinosaurs to their ecosystems. Some nice new mechanics are layered in here to make the game feel more engaging, with wild areas in particular proving to be a really cool addition to the story. The returning characters are included in the narrative organically, with characters like Dr. Dewar, George Lambert and Isaac Clement incorporated in a way which doesn't negatively impact the storytelling. It's also worth noting that new mechanics like the scientists were much more important to the story than I had initially anticipated, adding some welcome new elements to the gameplay even if they can feel a little on the restrictive side at times. Unfortunately, however, the gameplay loop here doesn't feel as new and as refreshing as I had initially hoped. If you have played Jurassic World Evolution, then it is safe to say that you know what you're getting into, and although there are some welcome surprises here and there, this is overall a very similar experience. The guidance on some of the campaign missions also felt a little hit or miss at points, with me actually restarting a mission on one occasion thinking it had glitched out, when I actually just needed to upgrade my scientists. On the subject of glitches, it is important to note that I did encounter a couple during my campaign playthrough, and one of these did require a restart, but this was early in the mission and it wasn't as detrimental to my overall experience as it would have been had it occurred later in the mission. It is worth noting that the story here is quite short, clocking in between 3 and 6 hours depending on how quickly you complete it. I personally spent a lot of time in capture mode, uh, so that meant that the story lasted a bit longer for me. I do think that the ending of the story is rather abrupt here, but I would be willing to speculate that some content may have been cut here due to Dominion's delay. It certainly felt like we were building to the reveal of a certain organisation which we know will be present in the upcoming film, but unfortunately this never actually comes to fruition in the gameplay. Overall, the campaign provides a fun new direction for Evolution players, introducing some fun moments, some new locales, and a narrative which feels right at home with the post-Fallen Kingdom Jurassic Universe. I enjoyed this campaign a lot, and I hope that it is something which Frontier may build on more in future narrative experiences. The rest of the game is divided between Challenge Mode, Sandbox Mode, and the brand new Chaos Theory mode. I tried to dip some time into each of these to give you a balanced perspective. 
For Chaos Fury mode, I completed about 95% of the Jurassic Park mode. Uh, for Challenge mode, I played the first two maps, which are Germany and Canada. And for Sandbox mode, I dived into the map I had unlocked to see how unlocks worked in the new game. It's worth noting that Sandbox mode here is locked to one map until you complete more maps in Challenge mode, or until you hit a certain star rating on maps like 1993 Isla Nublar in Chaos Fury mode giving us more reason to dive into the other modes than was perhaps present in the previous entry. Chaos Theory Mode is a fun way to re-experience iconic moments from the films in a narrative-driven game mode, which has a much longer format than the campaign missions present within the game. This takes elements of story and elements of sandbox and combines them with some really interesting results. I really enjoyed the narrative elements found in this mode, but I did feel as though the gameplay offerings here transcended too quickly into the traditional Jurassic World Evolution format. Before long, the Jurassic Park scenario became a case of just building a park, something which I didn't feel quite worthy of the Chaos Theory moniker in its own right. With that said, I think that this mode has some great potential, and I am really excited to explore the other modes present across the game mode when I have more time. I'm also excited to see what the future of this mode could be, as scenarios from Camp Cretaceous, Battle at Big Rock, and of course Jurassic World Dominion could all add some extra depth to this game mode post-launch. Challenge mode is, in contrast, a less narratively structured mode, providing you with a set of parameters within which you must achieve certain objectives. I like the different restrictions present within challenge mode, particularly things like Germany outlawing carnivals, for example, and I also appreciate the fact that there are a variety of different maps and locations present as a part of this mode, and I especially like that you can then unlock these for sandbox. This adds a lot more depth in terms of locations than the original five deaths in Jurassic World Evolution ever offered, meaning that players will be able to choose different locations which match the parks that they are looking to create. I also appreciate the fact that there are different cosmetic unlocks available for different difficulties, encouraging players to come back and revisit challenge mode so that they have the opportunity to unlock more cosmetic customization. This adds more replay appeal and may even lead to me tackling the more difficult game modes for the first time. For anyone who doesn't know, I am a very casual gamer. I enjoyed my time with challenge mode and I'm actually really excited to slowly work my way through the rest of the content packed into this mode so that I can unlock more of the locations present as a part of it. Sandbox mode takes on much the same format as the previous game, for better or for worse. This means that every element of the game must be unlocked in one of the other modes before you can use it in sandbox mode, and that means that fans who were frustrated with this system in the first game may find themselves once again having to spend more time grinding through the game's other modes before they can build their dream park. I can see this from both perspectives. I understand that it's frustrating not being able to experiment with new things like aquatic creatures straight out of the gate, but equally, I think that it's good to have more reason to dive into the other modes and play through them. I can tell you that I would be unlikely to play challenge mode if it wasn't for the sandbox feature unlocks which are present within it, so I think this is a good addition when it comes to thinking about the longevity of the gameplay that this game has. With that said, it would be nice to see things unlock for players in a couple of months time so everyone can play with the new additions to the game without needing to unlock them beforehand. That's an overview of the different modes present within the game, and now I think it's worth talking about some of the good additions present throughout the sequel, and where there perhaps may be room for more improvement. We'll start with lagoons and the presence of aquatic animals. I love the fact that the team have found a way to introduce these animals into the game, and I love the fact that we are able to get into the depths of the lagoons with capture mode. This lets us really appreciate these new additions, and it is certainly very welcome. 
Similar praise can be extended to the brand new system for aviaries, providing a much greater level of accessibility and functionality than was present in Jurassic World Evolution. I think these are both two huge overhauls and additions which when compared to the previous game really shine, and they are certainly something which the Frontier team should be proud of, as they really go further towards allowing us to envision our perfect Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. Diversity in terms of buildings and habitats also deserves some praise in the sequel. Being able to change up how buildings look with a variety of different baked in cosmetic options really helps to make different elements of the park feel distinctive. Whilst these cosmetic changes are only limited to amenities and guest attractions, they are still very welcome and help to give us much more flexibility when it comes to creating unique parks. The inclusion of paleobotany in the base game this time around also means that paddocks often end up looking naturally different from each other, with different animals thriving with different plant life or different sort of habitat combinations. This really helps to add much more visual appeal and flair to the different enclosures present within Jurassic World Evolution 2, and this combined with the, the unique plant life for different geographies really feels a world apart from the nature present within the first game. It's worth noting that there are currently no solo placeable trees however, so this is something I would like to see return in the future. It's also worth highlighting the included scenery in this game, adding much more diversity to our parks than in the first game. You can place different scenery elements together to create some fun aesthetics, such as simulated seating areas outside buildings, or even more elaborate entrances to things like hotels. This is welcome, and whilst there isn't as much um, in terms of sort of different depth of options as I would like to see, I am sure that this is something which will be built on after launch. Talking about scenery also reminded me that the placements of buildings and other elements seem much more refined in the second game, with building able to be placed tighter together and with pathways able to run more tightly between buildings. This means that we can squeeze much more out of the play environments in the sequel, even if they have much more space to offer anyway. Lastly, on notable highlights for me is the weather conditions. Sandstorms and snowstorms certainly stand out, with snowstorms actually covering the natural texture of your park with snow. This was really well realised implementation, and these weather events combined with new behaviours for your animals help to make the parks feel much more dynamic and alive. New mechanics like the Paleo Veterinary Facility and Scientists are much more hit or miss in my opinion. Whilst I like their addition and the depth that they add, I did find them aggravating at points, with dinosaurs constantly becoming sick or with scientists frequently needing upskilling or resting to complete tasks. Whilst this adds more thought and planning towards the growth of your parks, it can also feel like an unintentional barrier at times, preventing you from achieving objectives and causing you to work through more draining smaller objectives in order to achieve your main goal. This is something which I think is inherently a good addition, I just wish that some of the side effects of these situations were a little less prevalent, purely to avoid frustration at some times. I also think the game in general brings up situations which require you to intervene a little too frequently, making the overall gameplay loop a little more frustrating when attempting to complete objectives. I found this particularly when trying to achieve 5 star rating on Jurassic Park's Chaos Theory mode. I felt as though I was constantly fighting breakouts, storms or other events like fuel running out, and this in turn made the whole experience much more time consuming. Whilst I can appreciate that these inclusions are there to challenge the player and to add to the longevity of missions, I do wish that they were perhaps a little less frequent. This is an effect which is perhaps exasperated slightly by the fact that the core gameplay loop is so similar to Jurassic World Evolutions, meaning it can become frustrating as it feels so familiar. I think good effort has been made to distinguish the gameplay loop from the previous titles, but there is perhaps a little more refinement needed to truly make the game feel like a new experience in its own right. The final thing I wanted to touch on is dinosaur variety. 
This game pulls a lot of familiar assets from the previous title, with so many making the journey across that new additions felt few and far between. Whilst I appreciate that all these dinosaurs needed to return, given how important most of them are to the franchise, I do think that it would have been nice to see a wider roster of animals at launch, especially when it comes to aquatic animals and pterosaurs. I am sure that this is something which Frontier will build on in the months after launch, with animals like the Quetzalcoatlus no doubt being added for Jurassic World Dominion, but it was a little disappointing to see so few new dinosaurs pop up during my time with the sequel. To conclude, Jurassic World Evolution 2 is a good sequel which makes great strides towards building upon the original game. The new additions here are welcome and expand the diversity possible within the game, and it certainly feels as though a large chunk of the features which have been added in the sequel have been inspired directly from feedback from the community. It is somewhat sad to see these new additions overshadowed by the resemblance that Evolution 2 has to the previous title, preventing the new additions from truly shining in their own right. It is safe to say that Evolution 2 sets the stage for a complete Jurassic experience, and the real test will now be seeing if post-launch content and additions can truly help to make this game stand out as the definitive entry in the Evolution franchise. Thank you for checking out this review, and a special thanks to Frontier for providing early access to the game. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and stay tuned for more Evolution 2 content in the near future.